Joining us in the studio is Professor Malik Bajbush, who is a psychiatrist at Charité and who is involved in research on the language of emotions. Now, do you think it is possible to judge whether a therapy really has healed an offender or not? It's really difficult to judge it by, by these methods which we have seen, like um, fMRI, magnetic resonance imaging. And what we can see is um, that certain brain areas are involved in the course of a therapy. What we cannot see and cannot predict is whether a therapy works or not. But still, there are probably, after a therapy, there might be changes you can actually realize and see in the brain. That's a big benefit of these techniques, um, that we can see and visualize um, what is happening in the brain and what is happening in the course of a treatment. And mm -hmm. what one can see is that in the course of a treatment like um, a psychotherapy, for example, the prefrontal brain areas becomes more active. But you will still need a psychologist or a psychiatrist actually to judge after a therapy whether the person will not relapse anymore. Yeah, what we want to do is that we want to change behavior in a certain um, direction. What we do not want is only to change some brain areas. Mm -hmm. Is there actually a chance um, to understand whether some of us become offenders and others don't? It is difficult to um, understand these um, differences only by brain um, imaging like we have seen. Um, there we just have changes within groups. So we have a group of offenders and we have a group of persons who are not offenders. And if you compare these two groups, you find certain differences. Um, this is true for groups on a group level, but this is not true for um, each of us, for individuals. Can actually anybody become an offender? I mean, you and I? Could something happen and we just change in our characteristics and become offenders? We all have a certain likelihood to become an offender and, and this is moderated um, by our genes which we carry in us. This is moderated um, by the um, world which we, in which we grow up, the early um, childhood is very, very important. And if you had a um, nice um, childhood and if, if um, your genes are quite nice, you have a very, very low likelihood that you will become an offender. That means we as parents actually have lots of influence in educating our people to have this stable emotionality and empathy also. Yeah, this goes in both directions, not only um, that something becomes in the direction of an offender, but um, if you teach your children emotional competencies, for example, empathetic behavior, this will have a protective um, effect on your children. Mm -hmm. Now you work in that field of language of emotions, actually, how do emotions determine our decisions on a general level? Well, there had been a couple of um, investigations showing that um, if you decide emotionally um, driven, these are often the better decisions as compared um, to um, decisions you, you make only by your brain on rational level. So we should listen to our guts. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the talk, Marek Bajbush.